Zambia is at a critical place of its economic life cycle. With new innovations and a drive to improve the welfare of citizens, the development process is in full swing with the revival of the mining sector taking the lead. One aspect that stands out in the development process is the energy sector, which has been a challenge. There is a ray of hope as mining companies position themselves from future shocks. At ZCCM Investment Holdings, we believe. Sustainability is our focus for long-term success. Management of our investments is done by highly skilled personnel. Accretion is another strategic pillar for us to make steady, continuous gains. Risk influences all our decisions to safeguard the interests of our stakeholders. Timeliness is religiously followed for us to position ourselves to react efficiently to emerging trends and market opportunities. Longevity is ingrained in our investments to build lasting controlled growth and prosperity, yielding a maximum return on investment for our stakeholders is at the core of our strategy. At ZCCM Investment Holdings, we're building a bright and prosperous future locally and globally. Now, let's get to um, engage our first guest on the program. And uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, energy vis-a-vis -vis the mining sector. And I'm joined by Lieutenant Kenyo uh, Cyrus uh, Minwala, who is retired um, CEO of Mamba Energy Limited. It's good to have you on the program. I hope you're doing well today. Thank you very much. And thank you for getting me on the show today. All right. Now, Mamba is currently generating uh, 300 uh, megawatts. How significant is uh, this uh, contribution in view of uh, the uh, power shortage the country is currently facing? Thank you. Mama Energy has two units of 150 megawatts and thus generates 300 megawatts for the national grid. Hmm. As we understand from various published information in Zambia, Zambia is currently generating a total of 1,100 megawatts, excluding uh, imports. So that means the contribution is approximately 25% or one-fourth of the current power generation in the country. Let me also uh, go further and say that more than the numbers, we would like to also highlight the risk mitigation that is provided by Mumbai Energy. Diversity in energy mix is also very important for a nation and, and for an economy. And Mumbai Energy fixed, uh, meets this objective uh, per perfectly. Importantly, we are a supplier of baseload power. And I'm happy to share that Mumbai Energy continues to supply power at the same levels as that before the onset of this drought, irrespective of the vagaries of weather. And I would also like to inform everybody, including your viewers, that Mumbai Energy operates one of the best maintained thermal power plants globally. Our operations and maintenance teams are perhaps the most competent in the business. All right. This allows us to maintain our plant availability at global benchmark levels. Thus, this enables us to produce maximum power for uh, Zesco. All right. Uh uh, thermal power generated from, from coal is often considered by many experts as dirty energy. Um, what is Mamba you know, doing to try and clean up this, this, this power energy, so to speak? Thank you. First and foremost, fundamentally, I would like to share that Mamba power project, which was envisioned in 2010, 2011, and which got established in 2016, was fundamentally a pollution ab abatement idea. Your viewers need to know that Mamba was a legacy mine, which was non-operational, which stockpiled thermal grade coal, which is to self-combust, combust, catch fire. There were a lot of smoke, a lot of pollution. And there was a perennial health issues in the community around Mamba. Setting up a mine mount uh, power plant with technology uh, available in the market allowed the thermal grade coal to be used in power generation in a controlled manner and at the same time contribute to the national energy security. Hmm. And therefore, this also significantly improved the, the development of the Mamba community. And therefore, I must give credit to the stakeholders and the decision makers at that time to think so far, far in advance. Secondly, all those who have visited uh, Mamba would know very well 
that the emission controls of a plant are at global benchmark levels. There's hardly any smoke uh, emitted to the extent that visitors ask us whether our plant is in operation and where is the mine located. And they just can't believe that they are visiting an operational coal-fired plant with an integrated coal mine. Our right. emission levels are better than World Bank and Zema standards and, and guidelines. This is maintained by using the best-in-class technology with automated controls. And lastly, apart from this, we continuously work for rehabilitation of the environment. And in the last few years, about four or five years, we have planted approximately 55,000 trees over 52 hectares. And each one of these trees is surviving and have now become big. All right, great. Now, I know that you've made various, um, you've been ambitious in terms of, um, you know, expanding um, your outputs as, 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 as a company. Um, and I know that first two of you, those, uh, you know, aspirations as comprised of an additional 300 megawatts, um, which was recently commissioned and scheduled to uh, be completed by 2026. Just give us an update with regards to um, this particular undertaking. Where are we right now? Thank you. Like phase one, which has two into 150 megawatt units, phase two also has a similar configuration of two into 150 megawatts, which makes it 300. So 300 plus 300 makes it makes it 600. And as you're aware, that the groundbreaking ceremony was held on 13th August, which was graced by His Excellency, the President of the of the Republic of uh, Zambia. And if I take a step back, it was during the President's visit to Mamba in January 2023 that he first discussed this expansion. And therefore, from there to now, we have traveled a long way. And therefore, the President's office, the various ministries of energy, finance, commerce, and along with ERB and ZESCO, we have worked together to make this a, a reality. The aspect of funding of the project became a local solution to a local situation. And in this regard, NAPSA, ZCCMIH, and other banks have come forward to uh, fund this project. Works are now pretty, uh, progressing as scheduled. The EPC contractor, the main contractor who's from China, and our projects team is already on ground. We will be starting excavation very soon in November, and the, prog and the project is on track. All right. Um, uh, I, I'm afraid we have to, to, to leave this uh, conversation uh, here for now. But just um, as, 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 a, as, as, an, as a concluding you know, um, uh, note, does Mamba have plans to add more, more growth, more output, more units? Yes, the answer is yes. All right. Energy is a key driver for uh, economic growth. But however, given the right business enablers, Mamba Energy will always be willing to evaluate additional of uh, capacity and addition of units. All right, great. I want to thank you very much for coming through and uh, want to commend you for the great work you're doing uh, in trying to alleviate the challenges the country is facing when it comes to you know, the energy sector. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right, that's, uh, there is um, uh, Lieutenant uh, Keno Cyrus uh, Aminwala, retired, uh, just to speak to us um, on the efforts that uh, Mamba Energy Limited is uh, putting in place to ensure that uh, the country's energy sector is secure. Now, let's move on, and uh, I'd like to let you know that later on in the program, we'll be talking to African Grenco, a private company also working in the energy space um, in the country. But first, let's find out uh, what's happening in growing renewable energy production capacity by the uh, Corporate uh, Energy Corporation, PLC, uh, a company in which, uh, you know, ZCMIH um, has, uh, you know, 31.07% uh, stake. The energy sector remains the backbone of industrial growth. Mining, Zambian's primary economic driver is significantly evolving through new technological opportunities brought by energy sector partners. The Copper Belt Energy Corporation, CEC, has strategically continued to offer alternative energy solutions complementing the traditional hydroelectric power. The 60 megawatts ETMP solar photovoltaic power station in Kitwe stands out as a successful example of diversification into sustainable power energy solutions. The Copper Belt Energy Corporation is a company that is listed on the stock exchange and uh, this is a company that deals in power. 
uh, its main business is uh, fragmented into generation, transmission, and uh, distribution. Initially, it was just uh, transmission and distribution. But with the onset or the coming on board of um, uh, renewable power, which is the solar energy, we also are into generation. And so we have a network that is uh, stretching across uh, the copper belt, and it has well over 45 substations and a well-connected network of um, transmission lines, which stretch over a thousand kilometers. With the increasing demand for clean, green and sustainable energy, CEC operates a state-of-the-art power control center. The advanced technologies implemented in the control sector can detect any anomalies that may disrupt power supply to crucial sectors such as mining. A tour guided here showcases how CEC energy services are enhanced by renewable energy options and sustainable practices. As the Copper Belt Energy Corporation, we have upgraded our substations, our equipment, transmission lines, our transformers, and whatever circuit breakers we have to suit the demand that is uh, uh, currently um, obtaining. And also, we have a state-of-art control center. Now, this is the nerve of the Copper Belt Energy Corporation. It acts as a tool that makes sure that everything is monitored and the safety of the personnel the um, dependability of our network due to the quality of supply that we supply to, to our customers and also the safety of equipment that uh, our investors have uh, put in uh, into their companies are uh, kept safe. The story of sustainable alternative energy generation is a game changer. CEC has been at the forefront of energy diversification since 2018 and has consistently achieved success. So at CEC, corporate social responsibility is a key component of our value distribution and our focus and approach is to ensure that we create long-term uh, partnerships and ties with the communities in which we operate. Our CSR is anchored on health, environment, social infrastructure, sport and education. So in terms of the support that we offer to sport, CEC offers uh, support towards our Power Dynamos uh, Club and it's been doing that from inception. With regards to our support towards education, CEC has partnered with Copper Belt University by empowering students with the required skills uh, through training on CEC equipment. In particular, when we developed the solar riverside uh, uh, plant, we did uh, engage students to work with us so that they could have hands-on um, experience on solar plants. In terms of uh, environment, CEC has been planting trees on the river sources and water catchment areas on the copper belt with the uh, view of preserving water resources but also supporting our ambitions for carbon offsetting. Energy transformation solutions that once seemed far-fetched are now a tangible reality. CEC, a company in which ZCCMI holds 31.7% shareholding interest, has indeed showed its dedication to delivering sufficient alternative energy solutions that will help foster growth and development of Zambian's mining sector. This is Mining Corner. You're still watching Mining Corner. Well, with government's target of producing 3 million metric tons of copper per year by 2032, the efforts being made, obviously, um, by private entities like uh, uh, the Copper Energy Corporation will go a long way um, in helping us meet that, that dream. Now, this Mining Corner, uh, which is brought to you by ZMIH, um, and we shall be uh, interesting you to a roundup of top headlines in the mining sector. And also, don't forget, you can participate in the quiz Look out for this segment later on, and don't forget that uh, you'll be able to win fantastic prizes if you get the answers correct. Mining Corner Quiz. Congratulations to the winners that have won so far. We have two quiz posts that you can participate in and stand a chance to win a ZCCMI Edge Hamper. To participate, Kindly post your answers in the comments section. Quiz guidelines. One, 
The quiz is open to all ZCC MIH online community with exclusion of ZCC MIH employees. Two, only participants who answer all the questions correctly will qualify for the draw, which will be conducted during the broadcasting of the TV show. Three, answers to quiz questions must be posted in the comment section of the social media quiz post. Four, a draw will be conducted and the top three winners will be announced during the broadcasting of the TV show and will be contacted once announced. Five, winners will receive ZCC MIH or ZCC MI subsidiary corporate branded items, e.g. cups, t-shirts, notebooks, etc. Six, the final draw comprising of all winners will be conducted at the end of the TV series, the 10th episode. The overall winner will have an opportunity to tour a mine at one of our corporations. You're still watching Mining Corner. Welcome back. Now, you may agree with me that uh, private public partnerships are key to the development and growth of any sector. I'm joined by Mr. Wesley Gondwe, who is the um, executive director for Zambia uh, for African Green Coal, uh, to discuss the operations uh, in the sector. It's good to have you on the program, um, uh, Wesley. I mean, first of all, you cannot right now talk about the, can the current state of the country's economy, the current state of the mining sector, without talking about the, uh, the energy sector. So you're welcome. It's good to have you on the program today. Hello, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. All right. Now, the, the, the sector's opened up to more private players in the energy sector, you know, um, and, and you operate in this space. What, 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 what would you say, in a general sense, with regards to uh, the opportunities that lie uh, in this sector, but also the role of private players in trying to help the country deal with the current uh, energy deficit burden that we are enduring right now. Thank you, Brian. Um, you know, Green Co um, <clears throat> has been in operation in, uh, in Zambia right. uh, since 2019-2020 uh, uh, on the back of the um, you know, Electricity uh, Act uh, of, uh, of 2019 uh, and the amended uh, Energy Regulation Bill of 2019 um, enacted in, in 2020. Uh, and those, those bills uh, provided uh, for the first time very clearly uh, for uh, the participation of uh, um, entities in the electricity sector such as traders, right. uh, of which uh, Greenco is one such. Um, in fact, for your information, Greenco was the first licensed electricity trader in, in Zambia. In, uh, in 2021 by the, by the ERB, mm -hmm. uh, and we were also the first trader under the um, you know, market participant category uh, to become a member of the Southern African Power Pool. So we, we saw and, in, and, uh, and anticipated um, and advocate for an increasing uh, role for the private sector to play in our electricity sector. Um, so already, uh, as you are aware, we've had private uh, players in our energy sector, the likes of Copper Belt Energy Corporation, uh, you know, Ndola Energy um, and others who have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, contributing uh, to the gains that the country has made over the years mm -hmm. alongside, uh, alongside ZESCO. Uh, but we really do see, um, you know, the, um, um, you know, the, uh, the introduction of, uh, of players such as traders uh, moving the, um, you know, the, uh, the narrative along um, in uh, bringing about, um, <clears throat> you know, structures that can facilitate and enhance uh, and accelerate uh, investment in new generation. Mm. Um, you know, Green Co, I think when you say trader, um, I think people would kind of like generally understand that to mean buying and reselling. Mm. Uh, but really, Green Co's fundamental role is actually to facilitate investment in new generation right. by being a credit worthy off taker, offering long term, uh, you know, off take to uh, private investors uh, in generation uh, and working with our national utilities ESCO. Uh, to, to utilize the, uh, the grid infrastructure uh, that allows us to trade uh, new renewable generation uh, to customers such as mines in, in Zambia who are desirous of um, you know, uh, diversifying their, their um, uh, supply mix, right. um, um, not just f you know, for the country, but you know, to secure their own long-term supply. Hmm. Ultimately, this has a positive impact on our total um, you know, um, 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 uh, you know, energy or electricity mix in, uh, in the country, right. which does speak to uh, the country's, you know, Vision 2030, um, um, you know, aspiration 
uh, you know, from the droughts that hit us from 2015 onwards yeah. to diversify away from our over-dependence on hydro mm. and introduce other, you know, clean technologies in our mix. Right. And, 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 and private players like yourselves are very important as far as, the, that in, as, far as the realizing that ambition is concerned, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as we know, we've, you know, up until recently, uh, not just in Zambia, but across the region, we've had what, um, you know, was either, you know, kind of like by default or by regulatory, uh, you know, design, uh, what we call the single buyer model, meaning that, uh, you know, our national utilities acted as the sole off taker um, of new power that was, uh, that was brought onto the market. So if you invested back then in new generation, mm. you could only sell that power, you know, to, to Zesco before right. the regulatory changes were made. Yeah. Um, and the way those investments were secured was ultimately by the government, you know, uh, providing, um, you know, backstop guarantees to say if, uh, the national utility was unable to meet its obligations to this private sector generator of power, then the government would have to step in um, and either support, you know, Zesco in meeting its obligations or even buying that project ultimately. Mm. Uh, that led to, um, you know, an increasing, um, 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 you know, load of contingent liabilities yeah. on our national budget, on our national balance sheet, the treasury. Um, and there comes a point when that's not sustainable anymore. And what Greenco is saying is actually the private sector can take on that risk um, and uh, uh, you know, rationally allocate it uh, among private sector players um, involved in, in mm. the trades and transactions. All right. So effectively, we can increase generation without increasing the fiscal burden uh, on the national treasury. All right. Interesting. I mean, you, you've touched on, on a number of issues. Um, but as, as, as our last talking point, um, when we talk about the energy mix and you know how the country needs to uh, put in place measures and actualize these measures to try and diversify the energy mix in the country, this obviously this ambition does present a lot of opportunities for new players onto the market, isn't it? Um, what are those opportunities you see for for newcomers onto the market? I think as a trader, yeah. um, first of all, if you're going to trade you actually need you know, trading uh, you know, counterparties. Mm -hmm. You need to trade with somebody. And I think making trading more dynamic, not just within the borders of Zambia, but across the region. You know, if we are going to really um, maximize uh, and, uh, uh, and, and increase security of supply, we have to move away from this kind of like insular mm -hmm. or call it nationalistic view on how we achieve that. We have to work uh, in a coordinated fashion across the region. Um, indeed, this was one of the, uh, you know, the key uh, premises on which the Southern African Power Pool was founded back All in right. 1995 um, you know, as an initiative of the SADC region. Um, so by being able to trade and having private sector players who can increase the efficiency of, of trading, increase liquidity, we will see that uh, security of supply um, not just in, in, in Zambia, but across the region, yeah. um, you know, is increased. When one country, um, you know, is, is in trouble, such as, you know, Zambia has been, we've had to rely on our neighbors mm. to support us with increased, um, you know, supply or exports from them into, into Zambia. We've also got to cooperate on, um, you know, uh, strategic regional interconnection of uh, our transmission grids mm. for trade to, 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 to happen. All right. So the opportunities for traders in in in, um, in 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 our in our markets right now is we've got a you know a self-evident um, you know gap all right uh, in our total generation capacity and in our mix all right and private sector can come in and help fill that gap well um, uh, that that should excite many you know would be investors isn't it <laughs> in this sector i want to thank you very much i'm afraid we have to drop it here for now because we're pressed for time but thank you very much for for coming through indeed and wish you the best of luck Thank you very much, uh, Brian. It's uh, been a pleasure, and thank you for having me, and uh, look forward to continuing our conversation uh, at some point in the future. Indeed. That's uh, Wesley Gondwe, who is the executive director for uh, Africa Green Co. Zambia, talking to us about the energy uh, sector and the many opportunities that lie in that sector. All right, so up next on Mining Corner, mining news headlines in 60 seconds. Stay with us.
it was a packed show, wasn't it? And the stakeholders have given their views with regards to the energy sector, and that should go a long way in informing the mining sector, which obviously depends on the existence and the flourishing of the energy sector. My name is Brian Mulamba. Thanks for watching. We're back again next week. Bye-bye.